The Coming of the King The Coming of the King is a delightful morality tale featured in Miss, Miss Richard's collection of stories and poems. The Pig Brother, Brother and Other Fables and Stories 1881 Working together to make positive changes and act kindly to others doesn't require a king at all, but the warmth in our hearts can be as golden as a crown. O M E children were at play in their playground one day, when a herald rode through the town, blowing a trumpet and crying aloud, The king! The king passes by this road today! Make ready for the king! The children stopped their play and looked at one another. Did you hear that? They said. The king is coming. He may look over the wall and see our playground. Who knows? We must put it in order. The playground was sadly dirty and in, cor in the corners were scraps of paper and broken toys. For those who were careless children but now one brought for these were careless children but now one brought a hoe and another a rake and a third a ran to and a third ran to fetch the wheelbarrow from behind the garden gate. They labored hard till at Length all was clean and tidy. Now it is clean, they said. But we must make it pretty, t pre pretty too. For kings are used to f find things. Maybe he would not notice mere ch cleanness, for he may have it all the time. Then one brought sweet rushes and st and stewed them on the ground. And others made garlands of oak leaves and pine tassels and hung them on the walls. And the littlest one pulled marigold buds and threw them all around, all about the play playground. To look like gold, he said. When all was done, the playground was so beautiful that the children sto stood and looked at it and clapped their, clapped their hands with pleasure. Let us keep it always like this, said the littlest one, and the others cried, Yes, yes, that is what we will do. They waited all day for the coming of the king, but he never came. Only towards sunset, a man with travel-worn clothes and a kind, tired face passed along the road, and stopped to look over the wall. What a pleasant place, said the man. May I come in and rest, dear children? The children brought him in gladly and set him on the seat that they had made out of an old cask. They had covered it with the old red cloak to make it look like a throne, and it made a very good one. It is our playground, they said. We made it pretty for the king, but he did not come, and now we mean to keep it so ourselves. For, for, so for ourselves. That is good, said the men. Because we think pretty and clean is nicer than ugly and dirty, said another. That is better, said the man, and for tired people to rest in, said the littlest one. That is best of all, said the man. He sat and rested and looked at the children with such kind eyes that they came about him and told him all they knew about the five puppies in the barn and the thrushes nest with four blue eggs and the shore where the gold shells grew and the man nodded and understood all about it. By and by he asked for a cup of water, and they brought it to him in the best cup, with golden springs on it. Then he thanked the children. Then he then he thanked the children and rose and went on his way. But before he went, he said he laid his hands on their heads for a moment, and the touch went warm to their hearts. The children stood by the wall and watched that the man as he went slowly along. The sun was setting and the light fell in long slanting rays across the road. He looked so tired, said one of the children. But he was so kind, said another. See, said the littlest one, how the sun shines on his hair. It looks like a crown of gold. I hope you enjoyed this. Mm-hmm. <laughs>